Hi and welcome back again. Today I'm going to show you how to edit 360 degrees photos the easiest, the fastest way and the coolest thing about my workflow is it works on all platforms. You can edit this way on Mac OS and on Windows. The only thing you have to purchase is Adobe Photoshop. The rest of the tools I'm using in this workflow are completely free. A few weeks ago I already made a tutorial on how to make 360 degrees photos with a drone and an app called Hangar 360. Marilyn C. Piro and a bunch of other guys asked me whether I could do another tutorial where I show you how to stitch in the sky manually or how to stitch the whole panorama together by yourself. In today's tutorial you'll learn how to do those 300 panorama shots yourself whether it's from a DSLR or a drone. If you use a DSLR you have the problem that you normally have your tripod in the lower part of the picture and if you use a drone you normally don't have the sky in your panorama. This workflow I'm about to show you will solve both those problems. You can apply them for the tripod and for the sky problem. But before we get into all the action, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date whenever I do cool stuff like this in the future. I will post links for all the necessary tools in the description down below. Let me show you the tools you will need for today's workflow. The tools you need. Let's begin with Hugen. We'll need this tool to stitch all our photos together. Hugen is a free open source tool, so go ahead and grab it. Next up, the Dome Master Photoshop Action Pack. This little plugin will make your life much much easier while handling 360 photos. Facebook did set up a dedicated 360 photo landing page where you actually can find designated templates for Photoshop. They provide detailed descriptions on different panoramic settings so go ahead and grab them all. So let's jump right in and start stitching. Stitching a panorama. Fire up HugeGen and load in all the images you took for the 360 panorama. Don't mind how HugeGen aligns the pictures right now, we will take care of this later. HugeGen also takes automatically care of the brightness and the exposure settings of your pictures. Next up, the alignment of the individual pictures. This will take a while, so it's time for coffee. Since these pictures were taken with a drone, we don't have a picture of the sky in it, so HugeGen decides to automatically crop the image. But we are going to replace the black hole in the sky with a picture of the sky, so let's reset the crop settings in this picture. Since we're working on an equi-rectangular picture, we need to straighten the point of view to get the sky in the right position. Now let's rotate it by 180 degrees and we are good to go. We are finished with the editing in HugeGen. Now go back to the assistant and click on create panorama. Here you choose your dedicated output format and then let HugeGen do its magic. You will end up with a picture that should look like this. The upper sky is completely empty and this is what we are going to change now. Installing the action pack. Go to your windows settings in Photoshop and activate the actions section. In the top right corner of the actions window click on the little menu button and select load actions. Go ahead select them all and click open. To make it easier for you with the Dome Master Photoshop Action Pack, click again on the menu button and select button mode. With this display setting you will have an easier way to edit your 360 photo for Facebook. Stitching in the sky. Let's start by morphing our picture into an angular fisheye. For this you click on 2 to 1 equi-rectangular to angular fisheye. Now we end up with a fisheye picture where the sky is displayed as a circle in the middle. We are going to fill the hole in the sky with a picture I took of the sky with my iPhone 7 Plus on that day. Go ahead and drop your sky sample into Photoshop. Make sure that you stretch your filler into the circle that represents the sky. It does not need to be perfect, you will see in a moment why. Next you will select the warp setting and form a circular object. In the next step we are going to match our filler to the actual sky. For this select filter and camera raw filter. Since we are talking about clouds I would take up the exposure, highlights, shadows and blacks till it fits the rest of the picture. Next up is the grayscale setting in your camera raw filter. Here you choose the luminosity for blue to a more whiter color. And as before play around with it till you think it matches the rest of the picture. Let's now start with the actual stitching process. Starting by adding a mask to our sky layer. Make sure to select the mask 
and then head over to Edit and select Fill. Now select black as the new filling color. You will notice that the new sky completely vanished and this is because the black areas in the mask won't be displayed. Now go select the lasso tool and draw a circle around the hole in the sky. This circle also does not need to be perfect. Now go back to Edit and Fill and fill this area now with white. Our sky now magically reappears within our selection. But since we don't like hard edges, we are going to apply a smooth transitioning between the two pictures. For this, make sure your mask filter is still selected, go to Filter, Blur and add a Gaussian Blur filter. You will see that the edges of the sky get really soft and we are going to use something around 100 pixels to get the most smooth transition between the two pictures. Since we are now done editing the picture, make sure to merge all visible layers to one. Now it's time to revert our picture to its original form. Herefore you go again to Actions and select Angular Fisheye to 2 to 1 Equirectangular. And here you go, this is your 360 degrees photo with a completely filled sky. Great job! Applying the Facebook template. Now go ahead and open the Equirectangular template from Facebook. Now go to your window settings and arrange the open windows to be side by side. But before we proceed we need to shrink our panorama to a resolution of 6000 to 3000. This is the highest resolution Facebook supports for 360 photos. Now grab your panoramic picture and throw it into the Facebook template. Now align the corners, save the picture as a JPEG and we are finally finished editing our 360 degrees panoramic picture. Publishing on Facebook. This is the easiest part. Select Uploading Photo, select your 360 panoramic photo and click Upload. After your upload is finished, click on the brush in the lower right corner of the picture and you can set the starting point of your 360 photo. Now you can finally enjoy your work without the signs of a missing sky or a tripod on the ground. So what do you guys think? Is this the fastest way to stitch your own 360 panorama photos? Do you have any other workflow that you think will be faster or more easier than this one? Post in the comments below and don't be afraid to share your creations also down below in the comments. And if I can help you guys with anything, also give me a shout out. If this tutorial was helpful, give me a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and I'm hoping to see you guys next time.